session. These sessions have been designed with employers in mind and will allow you to, number one, meet the team or some of the team. Number two, introduce you to our construction offer that we will be delivering from September onwards this year. Number three, take you through the application process. Number four, tell you how you can contact us. And number five, finally at the end, ask any questions that you might want to ask. We've already had a few come through, but please, at any point, just send through your questions. Can I have the next slide, please? So, on the meeting today is myself, my name's Jo Boff, and I'm the Business Development Manager for Apprenticeships here at the College. We have Paul Neustelein, who's second lead, covering construction. Richard Hewitt, who is Account Manager and specialises in construction. And hopefully, a little bit later on, Mark King will be joining us, and Mark is the Curriculum Manager for Construction. Next slide, please. So now I'm going to hand over to Richard, who, as I mentioned, is the account manager specialising in the construction area. And he'll just take you from an employer perspective, what is an apprenticeship? Over to you, Rich. Thank you very much, Jo. Yes, hi everyone. My name is Richard Hewitt and I work on the apprenticeship team, predominantly focused on construction. Now I'm just going to talk to you about briefly what is an apprenticeship. So firstly, it's a job with training. You're actually going to be earning while you're learning. So you'll be doing normal hours, probably Monday to Friday. And also usually attending one day a week in college. So predominantly the majority of the courses are normally four days in the workplace and one day in college. You're gaining industry skills. And then at the end of it, you'll gain a recognized qualification. So whether that'll be in the, the there's numerous different fields such as carpentry, electrics, plumbing, but my colleague Paul will talk to you about this, but you're gaining on the job training. So I'll just pass you over to Paul now. He'll talk to you about the various different areas we cover in the construction sector. Thanks, Rich. Uh, so this is uh, the City of Wolverhampton College's uh, construction offer for apprenticeships. So what we have at the top is uh, the level two brickwork, which is 24 months. Um, like most apprenticeships, uh, there will be uh, sessions in college which are specific towards uh, technique, training, skills, behaviours and knowledge, um, along with what the assessor will be doing uh, on site and in college. Um, as we move on down, we've got the uh, carpentry and joinery, which will be at two levels. So it'll be level uh, two and level three. So the level three is the advanced joinery, uh, and that's between sort of 12 months and uh, 18 months. Um, the next one is the construction plant operative, which is new for us uh, at City of Wolverhampton College. So it's an exciting new uh, uh, apprenticeship coming towards uh, us and obviously for uh, our customers. Uh, it's towards the um, more diggers and sort of uh, groundworks areas of that, and that's a 15 month. Uh, P&D, so paint and decorating, is 36 months. We've got plumbing uh, and domestic uh, heating technician, which is 42 months. Um, I would like to sort of emphasize the, uh, the time limits on some of these because they are actually there for a reason. So some of them is to do with actually the knowledge, skills and behaviors of what's going to be being able to be adapted within that sort of uh, standard. Um, on to level three. Uh, so like I said before, it's the advanced carpentry, which is 18 months. Uh, so it's the sort of site carpentry and sort of uh, architecture. And then you've got the electrician, which is 43 months. And then on to our surveying uh, uh, technician, which is 24 months. And then on to our level four offer, which is our site supervision. Um, with all of these, uh, these are sort of predominantly one day a week um, in college. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, if we could have the next slide. Um, so at the moment, well, traditionally actually, we deal with companies of all sizes. So large um, construction companies, large housing associations, down to micro businesses. And in the area that we cover, which is Wolverhampton and the Black Country, we have a real mix of businesses. Um, and how businesses pay for apprenticeships can depend on the size of the organisation. So Rich, if you could just explain a little bit about um, funding of apprenticeships and the apprenticeship levy. 
Can you just un unmute your microphone, Rich? Yeah, thanks for that, Joe. Yeah, so basically the government in April 2017 changed the way funding appeared for companies to take on apprentices. And it's very straightforward now. So if you're a levy payer, you have a payroll of over £3 million and you pay into what's called an apprenticeship levy pot, which will contribute 0.5% of your pay roll into that apprenticeship levy. So that is used then to actually train for either existing staff that you may have looking to put through a qualification or if you want to take on a brand new apprentice. You know, so it really is focusing these larger companies to take lead and actually take on an apprentice. And then if you don't have um, a payroll of £3 million, you're, caught, you're classed as a non-levy employer. So that's where, if you do take on a young person between the age of 16 to 18, uh, the actual apprenticeship will be fully funded by the government and you'll actually receive a cash incentive of £1,000, which is paid in the first 12 months. So the, there really is a big push here from the government to encourage employers to actually take on young people. But if, if they are over the age of 18, so for 19 plus, all you have to do is pay a contribution of 5% of the course fees. So just to give you an idea, um, if you were taking on a level two carpenter, uh, the actual full cost for that qualification is £12,000. You just pay 5%, which is £600. Obviously, this would ideally like to be paid up front, but obviously we can speak to our contracts team as well. Um, but overall, the government really are trying to push now for companies to take lead and take on new young people into the world of work. And I'll pass you over now back to Joe, I think, for the next slide. So I think what I'll do now is take you through the actual process from start to finish for recruiting an apprentice. So the apprenticeship team has many different areas to it, basically. So right at the front end, we have um, a recruitment team. We have a sales and account management team, which Richard is part of. Then we have sector lead, which is what Paul is. And Paul has a team of assessors and the assessors work with the learner in the workplace. So right back to the very beginning, recruitment. So we have a team of recruiters and the recruiters, it's their task to screen um, all the applicants, all the people who are interested in becoming an apprentice. They will look at their CV, they will look at covering letters, they will traditionally meet them for screening interviews face to face, though that's not happening at the moment. Um, we are now screening remotely, so either by telephone or by um, Zoom, Teams, WhatsApp, FaceTime. However we can organise screening, we're doing that at the moment. And what we'll do at that screening process is two things. One, if the person is ready to be put forward for an interview with an employer, that's great. We'll put them into our talent pool. And if we are recruiting two vacancies, we'll send them along for interview with yourselves. If they're not quite ready for an apprenticeship, what we will do is we'll give them some additional support. And that could be um, maths and English support at the college through a full-time course, or it could be a pre-apprenticeship programme, just to get them ready to take that first step onto the ladder for an apprenticeship. So once the um, candidates have been taken into our talent pool, the recruiters will assess what vacancies we have and match up the applicants with the vacancies. Um, the vacancies come from a number of sources, so it could be that whilst you're watching this or after this, you think, I think I'd like to know more about taking on an apprentice, in which case you could contact us and we'll arrange to have a conversation with you. It could be that you've seen some of our social media and you contact us through social media. It could be in the past that you've been to some of our events and you've already got the contact details for our account managers, in which case you can get in touch. But either way, it'll probably be Richard would arrange to have a conversation with you and to look at the kind of vacancy that you've got. 
Um, what is the area that you want the vacancy for? Um, what does the team look like? What does the job description look like? And would the apprentice get the kind of experience that they need to actually fulfill that apprenticeship? So, as I mentioned, the candidates are shortlisted. The shortlist would be sent over to you, the employer, and you would select who you would like to see and who you would like to interview. Again, traditionally, those interviews would take place at your workplace, face to face in the, the normal manner. At the moment, we've been arranging for interviews to be done again virtually um, over the phone, the initial screen. And then um, as of last week, we did have one of our first interviews um, where the candidate did go socially distanced into the, um, the, the workplace to, to have a look around and to meet the employer. If it is that you're both happy, you want to offer the candidate um, the vacancy, that's great. Um, we will take the next steps to organise getting that processed at the college. If it is that the candidate wasn't quite for you, we would ask for some feedback as to why that might be so that we can help that ca candidate potentially go for other interviews and be successful in the future. So if the candidate is successful and you want to take them on as an apprentice, we would then refer over to Paul, Paul the sector lead, who will process the application and allocate it out to one of our assessors. We have a team of assessors, quite a big team of assessors, um, with assessors for each area. So there'd be one for brickwork, one for painting and decorating, one for um, plumbing, and so it goes on. And so um, yourself and the learner would be introduced to the assessor. But I think at this point, it's important to also point out that your account manager will stay with you, the employer, for the duration of the apprenticeship. So you will always have that support there, in this case from Richard, if you've got any questions, any concerns, any issues. Um, the, it's fair to say that the assessor and Paul, the sector lead, if you like, monitor and support the learner. The account manager supports the employer. So that's the recruitment process. It's totally free um, and, and it's there just to support you, help you and advise you. Can I have the next slide, please? So mentioned getting in touch, how to get in touch with us. Obviously, um, I'm in college today because I'm due to principal, but um, normally all of the team is working from home. The phone lines are diverted, so you can still contact us. And the number to call us on is our main apprenticeship number, which is 01902 837 163. If it is you want to drop us a line, you can email us at accountmanagers at wolfcoll.ac.uk. So if anything today has, has triggered in your mind, an apprentice would really help moving forward. And we are all replanning now for this new normal. If you think an apprenticeship could be part of that restructuring of your organisation, get in touch. Um, Rich will happily pick up the phone, have a conversation with you, just give you more information and advice. And we can take it from there. We have numerous social media channels. So um, the college has all the main channels, but we also have our own apprenticeship channels on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn, and also on Instagram. Can I have the next slide, please? So now it's over, over to you, really. Um, we've got a few questions in, and what I'll do is if I field the questions, guys, and I'll sort of point them at, at you two and, and see who's the most suitable to take the questions. Is that okay? So we've talked about, um, I don't know, six, seven, eight, maybe apprenticeships. Could you just um, maybe, Paul, Richard, you might want to chip in. When did the apprenticeships actually start is the first question. Um, so the apprenticeships start uh, September-wise. That's when we sort of plan for them to start. But obviously, interest-wise, I'd say that starts now. Um, so our main actual sort of start point will be September and move on towards um, maybe two months at the very max uh, of some, some areas. It depends on really what kind of subject area we're looking at and apprenticeship area. Okay. And do you only have intakes in September or, or can you, is it possible to start later on in the year? Um, yes, we can start later in the year. It depends on kind of what the college is, um, has planned and also the, the kind of the interest from the uh, that area. So if there's a, a real need and a, 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 an interest, then the college would look at sort of maybe bespoke in certain areas. To support that. 
Okay. Um, the next question is from somebody who says they've never employed an apprentice before. How much will it cost me? And what is the apprenticeship wage? What have they got to pay the apprentice? Richard, do you want to take that one? Yeah, thanks, Joe. Yeah, it's a good question, actually. So in terms of costings, we've touched on it briefly, but if they're 16 to 18, there's no cost to the company to take them on. And they actually receive a government grant of £1,000. And that's paid in two instalments of £500. You get £500 after five months, then £500 after 12 months. Um, if there were 19 plus, though, the company would just have to pay 5% of the course fees. So on, on initial visit anyway from myself, uh, we go through the costings to make sure the company is well aware of exactly what's required before taking somebody on. Now, in terms of the actual wage, uh, the actual wage, uh, a company, regardless of their age, for the first 12 months, they're entitled to pay them the minimum apprenticeship wage, which is £4.15 an hour. And then if, say, they were in their mid-20s, in that second year of the course, they have to then align it mm -hmm. to the national minimum wage for that uh, age category. So it's very straightforward, but we do really go through this on our initial visit with the clients. So everybody is aware of, obviously, what the costs or non-costs are from okay. the beginning. Um, for the next question, um, could we go back to the slide with all of the apprenticeships on, please? That, uh, that's the one, yeah. The next question is, how long do they last? So um, if we just go through that list again, I'll, I'll just whisk through these. So we're doing the level two bricklayer, that's 24 months. We're doing carpentry and joinery, that's 24 months. Construction plant operative, as um, Paul pointed out, brand new to us, 15 months. Painter and decorator, 36 months. Plumbing and domestic heating technician, 42 months. Level three, advanced carpentry and joinery, 18 months. Electrician, 43 months. Surveying technician, 24 months. And then finally, the level four, construction site supervisor, 36 months. Now these are all minimum durations because each apprentice moves and, and progresses and develops at different rates. So this is the minimum duration that will allow us to get to what we call the endpoint assessment when that learner will go through the endpoint assessment and qualify as an apprentice. So these, some people who've got more experience might move quicker than these some people might move more slowly, but these are, if you like, the average, the minimum duration. So that's that question. Um, the next one I've sort of touched on, um, but I don't know if Richard and Paul want to add more to it. Again, I've not had an apprentice. What sort of support do I get? Um, I, I wouldn't know where to start. So I think as I picked up earlier in this session, that the front end, as the employer, you've got the account manager. So perhaps, Rich, you could just talk through um, some of the things as an account manager that, that you would support with. Yes. Yeah, so in terms of um, my role, obviously, it's very much uh, each client that we work with is given a dedicated account manager from the start. So this is very much from the beginning. And then we actually never leave that client all the way through the journey of the apprenticeship. So, for example, the bricklayer is 24 months we as an account manager will always be there for them. So we'll go through obviously funding with them. We'll do the health and safeties with them, making sure that public and employers liabilities up to date as well. And just generally making sure they're okay. How is it all going? And basically do it in, with some, with some respects as well. Some clients actually like to have eight, 10 week account manager reviews. Now I know our assessors, cause obviously Paul, manages the assessors there and they're obviously tasked with doing uh, mandatory reviews every eight to ten weeks but some clients actually like an account management review as well um, and it's very much just keeping the communications channels open between us and the employer and making sure the apprentice is happy as well as everyone from our side of the college so if there are concerns you know we are there to help and we are aware of it from the beginning. Paul, from the assessor point of view, um, what kind of support do they give in the workplace and how are they working at the moment because they can't actually go into the workplace? 
Yeah, great question, Joe. So uh, to, to the start of the question, uh, what they'd be doing, they'd be coming out uh, in the, uh, if we're looking pre uh, sort of COVID, they'd be coming out and supporting the business to make sure that the apprentice meets the standard. So the standard is required. So if we look at the brickwork standard, that they are meeting the requirement to um, progress uh, through that qualification uh, apprenticeship and end up at completing the endpoint assessment. So there would be the uh, six to eight uh, reviews, weekly reviews, like Rich pointed out. Um, there would be some communication and updating um, the employers on how the apprentice is doing, either in the work placement as well as at college. Um, so they're kind of that middle person uh, and also linking in with some of the reviews that Rich would do with the employer reviews to make sure we're triangulating that. Currently, uh, we are still working, uh, so we're working virtually. So I think you highlighted uh, some of the points earlier about using Teams uh, and some of the virtual world. That's what we're currently doing, and you know that has been a huge success for the, for us as the apprenticeship team and the college. Uh, there's online sessions with Google Classrooms for the sort of the kind of technical side or the curriculum side, uh, which is going ahead currently. Um, we do have learners in now um, who are kind of finishing off and obviously abiding by all the sort of government rules uh, of social distancing. Um, that leads on to the final question, which is actually about COVID and the college and how the college is, is, um, has reopened and what are they doing to, if you like, look after the learners. So if I just take that final question, because is on due to principal today. Um, the college opened last week, um, so we're into our second week now. Um, obviously, we've got all of the yellow and black tape down. We've introduced one-way systems. Um, we have sanitising stations. All of the learners are timetable to come in and they know exactly where they've got to go so that there's no wandering around college. The learners that we've got in are the ones that really need to uh, finish off practical work or assessments um, because obviously the other um, students that we have don't need to come in at this point now. Um, we have um, registers being taken, we know who's on site, who's not on site and we're, we're, we're verbally screening on arrival as well um, just to check for symptoms and um, if any tests have taken place. So we, we've done um, masses of work as a college to support from COVID. All of the students that have turned up over the last two weeks um, have, have been quite reassured and relaxed and, and worked well here. If they have to touch any equipment, the equipment is sanitised before they use it and sanitised after they've finished using it. Social, distance is in, it, social distancing is in place. And obviously it, it's one, one um, apprentice per piece of equipment, there's no sharing going on. So um, we continue to monitor government guidelines and to adapt as and when we need to, to anything that, that the government are introducing. So that's been our construction session for this morning. Um, just to highlight, if you do want to get in touch with us, if you would like Rich to have a conversation with you about construction apprenticeships, please don't hesitate to give us a call on that number there, 01902 837 163, or email us at accountmanagers at wolfcoll.ac.uk. Alternatively, you can message us through our social media channels also. So thank you for joining us. Um, we are seeing the green shoots of recovery, certainly for the construction trade here. We hope you're seeing it too. Um, stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.